Hi, I'm Daly from Greenwood Solutions and today we'll be talking about ground mount systems, the basics. As roof real estate for solar is slowly dwindling, the commercial solar designer and installer is peering down, now not at their feet, but terra firma, Mother Earth. Commercial ground mount systems compared to a roof mount system add another layer of complexity on top of existing installation requirements and there's a lot more documentation required than the more traditional roof mount situation. So what constitutes a ground mount system? Basically a ground mount system involves the construction of a, a freestanding steel or aluminium structure. And this is firmly anchored to the ground in most cases. And it supports ultimately a photovoltaic array. In the old days, the only ground mount systems were off grid. A hole was dug, and effectively, you know, hardwoods were, with suitable durability ratings were selected, and then a galvanised structure was connected where the panels were um, eventually placed. Obviously, with the advent of the solar farms, this has changed considerably. Most of the big solar farms nowadays are, are pile-driven affairs. Effectively, galvanised C-channel or similar is laid out positioned and effectively rammed into the ground, much like you'd smash in a star picket. Ground mount systems are not just pole driven. There are other systems that are used. Earth screws, concrete and ballasted systems, and products such as the superfoot, where a plate is placed on the ground and pipe of a certain diameter is driven in diagonally into the ground with jackhammers to secure the base plate. So with ground mount systems, we are looking at a completely different canvas from roof mount. Soil conditions are something that the roof mount designer and installer doesn't have to take into consideration. The ground mount designer does. He has to look at what kind of soil, whether it's clay, silt, loam, rubble, rock, a combination of all those. And even within that, looking at the clay, whether it's reactive or non-reactive. These are all considerations that determine the kind of foundation that is used and the methods used. In Australia, some of the earlier solar farms are currently experiencing some pretty severe issues with the poles actually leaning over. Now, this was due to a few factors. One, the depth in which the poles were pile driven wasn't deep enough. And or two, the actual clay, the actual soil was a reactive clay. So what happens with reactive clay when it dries, it contracts. When it gets wet, it expands. And lots of big holes started occurring around the bases of these, these piles. So in the end, the, the, the solar farms, there's whole solar farms leaning over because of this reactive nature of the clay, the reactive nature of the soil in which these piles were driven into. Documentation is a really important one. With all commercial system, there's a lot of documentation, but with ground mount system, there tends to be a complete additional section. Vegetation overlays, Aboriginal heritage overlays, traffic management plans, rare and endangered species um, survey results. And in some cases with ground mount syst uh, systems, depending on the size, a building permit is required as well. From a project management perspective, the timeline can increase, be increased compared to a roof mount. The cost of the project can increase considerably. And in a lot of cases as well, the, the customer, the company who's installing these systems, learns the hard way. A lot of businesses who do commercial solar keep that IP to themselves, very close to, the, to their chest because they've gone through the hard yards. When it comes to design, in a roof situation, commercial solar companies will design for the panels to be flat to the roof or on tilt. And the decision is based on the physical nature of the roof and it's weighted, weighted against cost-benefit analysis around increased labour costs versus more output versus system price. But with ground mount systems in nearly all cases, panels are tilted at the optimum for the location in question. With any commercial system, the physical characteristics of the site, coupled 
with the consumption profile of that site will modify design. Conclusion, the basics of solar are still the same as any roof mount system. There are additional considerations to take into account. Overall project times from inception all the way through the completion are usually greater with ground mount systems and the amount and level of documentation required is usually more than with roof mount projects. Thanks very much for watching our video on ground mount basics. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please feel free to contact us and hit that subscribe button if you see fit. Thank you.